Hey guys, so Exile.com was about a week ago and they announced a lot of really cool things. Uh, the major thing being Path of Exile 2. So I just wanted to make a quick video talking about Path of Exile 2. So let's just get right into it. Path of Exile 2 will have a seven act campaign with a shared end game alongside the original campaign. So this means if you're playing PoE 1 or just Path of Exile and your friend is playing Path of Exile 2, you guys will still have this shared Atlas in-game style that you could participate in together. I think this idea of having uh, two separate campaigns, one probably being shorter than the other because Path of Exile 2 only has seven compared to the 10 and one, uh, will mean that most people will probably prioritize whichever one is faster, which hopefully will be Path of Exile 2. I don't think that there will be really any reason for someone to want to go back and play Path of Exile 1, uh, aside from the fact that maybe they want to do it for some sort of nostalgic reason. Um, hopefully PoE 2 will be designed in a way that no one will want to go back and play the original one. One of the coolest things announced was shapeshifting. Um, there's going to be three different forms, a werebear, werewolf, and a werecat form. The werebear being the tanky form, the werewolf uh, having, a, the, I guess, the damage dealing form, and the werecat being the uh, stealthy, quick moving form. Alongside this was announced 19 new ascendancy classes. Some of these include the survivalist, the tactician, the beastmaster, the filer, the arcanist, and the reaver. One of the interesting things that I found about the beastmaster was the wild shaped node that granted bonuses to shapeshifting. Uh, in and out of different forms. Uh, funny enough, David Kim, one of the lead game designers of Diablo 4, talked about a talent that did the exact same thing for the druid in D4. Let's just say whenever you shapeshift into a form. Yeah. So this is very interesting because the bonus persists. Ah, uh, yes. So you can actually stack up these bonuses at the exact right moments that you want. So I think that's one of the coolest things about rapid shapeshifting. Because you can choose your bonuses, and items obvi obviously will have even more choices, right? So when you cook legendaries, you can do some crazy stuff, and the timing of when you change will matter a lot, right? right. Yeah. So it visually looks awesome, but on the system design side, it's cool because you have that full customization of I'm choosing what happens, and I'm choosing when it happens too, right? right. Yeah. So I don't know who's spying on who, but they seem to be on very similar wavelengths right now. Perhaps the biggest game changer, I guess you could say, announced with Path of Exile 2 was the whole new skill gem system. Uh, the items no longer have sockets. The gems themselves have sockets, and every single skill gem can be a six link. Uh, this will completely change how people theorycraft and play their characters now. Uh, there's also some added convenience to this whole new skill system. The thing I'm really happy about though, is you don't have to screw around with your gems all the time when you're changing items. Check out this bow here. The socket colors you get still come from your items, but now every single bow that drops will have exactly four green sockets. This means that we can swap this bow for this other one we have found, and we don't have to mess around with our gems. As we swap between the bows, we can see at a glance all the DPS values for our skills updating. It's still possible to fine-tune socket colors on items when you need to, but because everything that drops has fixed sockets, it's way easier to just pick something up and put it on while leveling. For new players, another really great advantage is that it's now impossible to socket a support gem into a skill gem that it doesn't work with. For example, this multiple projectiles gem can't be socketed into Leap Slam, but you can see with all the highlighted sockets that it will work with the other bow skills. The player damage being updated on the character sheet is an interesting thing to me. Uh, it has me curious as to whether or not damage in game will finally be accurate because right now in path of exile your character dps and sheet are are not accurate with how much damage you're actually doing people have to go back and forth between a third party program like path of building to figure out you know what their character output actually is so that'd be a really nice quality of life feature to have in path of exile too there's also been some massive engine improvements new character models and animations, and updated skill effects like arrows sticking into and bouncing off walls. 
We put a lot of work into updating the skill effects throughout Path of Exile. For example, when you fire a split arrow, you really feel the individual arrows because some stick in the walls and others bounce off realistically. I personally loved how the new Frozen effect looked on mobs. Clearer because it signals to everyone, this is a new 7x game, there are 19 new ascendancy classes, all the things are new like you'd expect from a sequel. Of course, there's the causes people to think their old characters or micros right. abandoned. One of the big improvements with the engine is the new lighting system. It makes the game look much better than they could have achieved previously in Path of Exile. And I'm not sure if the lighting system has something to do with this or if this is like a new direction they're going for in Path of Exile 2, but the game does look much darker uh, and it reminds me a lot of D2 and I'm loving it. A lot of us, I think, play for the gameplay, but this is a really nice cherry on top. And I know a lot of people haven't tried PoE very seriously because of the grittiness and because it's pretty full-fledged in the past. Base armor looks much better on characters now. It doesn't seem like they're trying to make you look like Oscar the Grouch from Sesame Street to entice you into buying their MTX. There's going to be a lot more advanced boss fights, uh, especially it seems like more so in the early game. Uh, during the demo, they showed a boss that they had said was on even level with Fairgraves, and it had some almost in-game kind of mechanics going on, which is really interesting. But at the same time, since this game is going to have the same in-game that it currently does, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they balance that early game boss mechanic, those big fights with mapping and the bosses there because they're kind of trivial they don't really do a lot of those bosses don't really have interesting mechanics people just run in there two shot them run out and you know so i guess we'll see how that that pans out and probably the most exciting thing that was said during exile con was that even though path of exile 2 is you know at least a year away a lot of the content that we're seeing throughout these videos we're going to be able to see much sooner the only things that are really being held until launch day for Path of Exile 2 are going to be the campaign and the new skill system. So we could expect to see a lot of this stuff much sooner, which is really exciting. But yeah, I know this is a short video. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you liked it, make sure you subscribe. Um, if you didn't, make sure you comment below and call me a fat bald fuck. You could do that for fun anyway. Um, also, feel free to follow me on my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash be more gaming. I try to stream as often as possible. And yeah, thanks again, guys.